Eagle right now. Third down and four in the 35. Montez fake hand out, turns a corner, and there he goes. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Steven Montez, holy cow, he had the fake, and he rolled out to his left, and he was so alone, it looked like he was late for some... Celebratory locker room after the Buffaloes improved the 4 0 for the first time since 1998. 1 0 Pac 12 conference play, 38 16 on a Friday night, knocking off the UCLA Bruins. Along with Coach Gary Barnett, a voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Welcome in to the Buffalo Stampede. Pretty impressive. Maybe uh, maybe their most toughest test, I might say, here to start the season. And yeah, the Buffaloes get a passing grade. Well, I, I think that was a test, and I, and I like the way they responded after being down, after mm -hmm. the way they started. You know, normally we're used to this team getting off to a quick start you know they've scored two touchdowns in every game early on and in the first quarter and in this quarter they really struggled and uh, just it they they seemed out of sync early on but it was it's good to see them uh, uh, have to struggle back and grind you know this team needs to grind a little bit uh, two of those three wins were pretty easy but the grind is where you learn and where you grow sure. and you where you learn a lot about your team and and so when this team went down 16 to 14 and having to overcome uh, a slow start, uh, I saw a lot of things happening good with this team. And I saw the I saw the units sort of feed off each other. The defense started feeding off what the offense was doing. Gary, we might be seeing, speaking of learning, we might be seeing a young man learn to become a quarterback. Stephen Montez, 22 of 26 passing, uh, 250 roughly yards, passing touchdown, rush for a couple of more. You said during the radio broadcast it might have been his best game ever. Yeah, well, I, it's been the best game that I think I've seen him since I've been on the broadcast. And mm -hmm. uh, what I liked about him was probably two things. One, the very first play, the first touchdown he threw, um, he stepped up in and around in the pocket, not outside, not flushing, didn't look at the rush, made the throw, and he made a great throw. Uh, a year ago, he wouldn't have done that. And then uh, there were a couple times in a run game, and when he was under duress, where he, f he just found a way to get out of it. And uh, again, last year, because of where he was, he wasn't able to get out of that. He was outside flushed, and there was nowhere to go. So I thought he did a great job of handling this football team and leading it. I thought he was the single biggest reason that team won tonight. Yeah, good performance by Steven Montez. He, by the way, LaVisca Chanel connected for a touchdown for the fourth consecutive game. LaVisca also had a couple of rushing touchdowns for the Buffaloes as well. Before the ball game, we mic'd up offensive line coach and co-offensive coordinator Clayton Adams as he's been getting the big fellas ready for this game. Up, two. Squeeze those elbows, squeeze the knees. Two gallops to your right, swing the axe, finish on the angle. Chest on your thighs, stay balanced. Go ahead, here we go. Right hand is standard, two gallops to your left. Swing the axe, finish on the angle. Two. Low hips, there we go, stay balanced, stay balanced. Right hand and stagger, go ahead. Tap over your feet, get them up and down. Go ahead, here we go, partner up. And finish now, finish, come off the ball, hands and feet. Go ahead. Fight, grab your mouthpiece, let's go, bring it in. Bring it in, 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 bring it in. Let's go. All right, pause, here we go, on the goal line. First group up. First group up, ready to roll. Go back and take a couple left tackle sets because you're, you're going to be the two left tackle on the one, right? Were you trying to go swaggy above the knee again? No, I got the biggest knee pads out here, bro. I know you're trying to go a Kelly Witherspoon. Capri pants? Let's go one, set your feet, be ready to be here in 10 seconds. Set your feet and be ready. Hey, let's go get some, huh? Stand by to get some. Break, 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 break. Here we go. Let's go. Pull this up. Let's go, hands. Here we go, right tackle. Fight. Hands, break. Field goal. Field goal. Hey, hey, first PAT is Lucy. Remember, first PAT is Lucy. Clayton Adams getting the big fellas ready before the ball game. Uh, youth on that offensive front. They were mixing some guys in there. What was your assessment of what those fellas did? Well, first of all, I think uh, anytime you, you've got seven or eight guys that you can sort of play at, at every different position, that's a real plus. Um, and I think part of it is Clayton's trying to find the right 
combination, mm -hmm. and he's trying to be able to uh, hold them accountable if they don't play well. There's somebody else that does it does want to play and is ready to play, and that's a good thing. You know, fortunately they've been healthy uh, so far, and and uh, at this point in time, if you've got seven or eight guys, and I think they legitimately have eight guys that probably can, you know work in about any of those positions that's a real plus to have they're playing better uh, on the defensive side of the ball the Buffalo has held UCLA to roughly 300 yards in this ball game the needle is pointing up for that defense isn't it they're coming along it is coming along and uh, you know they got creased early on they got outflanked uh, you know UCLA's plan was to get outside that defense and uh, the combination of coaching adjustments and just players playing better. Uh, they got that solved for the second half, and then we, we came up with big stops, and you saw a couple almost near interceptions that, that we haven't had, but uh, played a much, much better second half than they did the first half, and they started feeding off what the offense was doing, and that's that's good. If you're coaching, that, that's what you want. In the last few seconds of the segment here, Buffs have another home game before they go on the road. ASU coming in here next week. Great opportunity to improve to 5-0, and but a good football team. No question, good football team. And before we go, you know, I want to mention the two tight ends that yeah. played in this game. Uh, between the two of them, uh, Russell and Bounds, there were three blocks on, on runs that enabled the touchdowns to be made. So those guys are playing. They're really blocking well. Good stuff. Buffaloes win at 38-16, improved to 4-0, 1-0 in Pac-12 conference play with Arizona State coming to town next week. Up next, we got a treat. CU alum, former host of Game Day, ESPN announcer Chris Fowler is going to join us here in the Stampede. What a night this is. Look at this place. This is beautiful. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. They, they gave me the opportunity to be a part of this quite a while ago, and I, of course, left it the chance. Then later on, the details came to light. They get this invitation, and it says, we're going to have this dinner inside the practice facility. But I didn't realize until I arrived yesterday that this was the kind of indoor practice facility we'd be having this party, and it fits. That's I mean, great seeing there with Chris Fowler hosting the SEI Gala just a couple of years ago when the Champion Center and the IPF were all brand new. And look what we found here. Chris Fowler actually in town because CMCI is having a great event for the students. Some of the great alums coming back and broadcasting to talk to the kids. Uh, boy, said about Mark Johnson. Great to see you. Good memories from that night. Yeah. And, and great to be back here. It's exciting. Every time I come back here, which, which sadly isn't often enough, there were improvements, there were upgrades, and it's right. fun to see. You know, I, I think a lot of people who have been around this program, Chris, for a long time, didn't think this could ever possibly happen here at CU. It's great to see it. Well, it had to happen. Yeah. It absolutely had to happen because there's an arms race in the sport that is multifaceted, as you know. Facilities are one part of it. You're trying to impress 17-year-olds. You're trying to make, make them understand that they're fully supported. The championships can happen here. And you know, facilities like this are, are an important way to communicate that. You know, you get a chance every week to do the Saturday night game on ESPN, see the greatest programs in the nation. Does this, what you've seen here as you've gone through it and seen the improvements even since you're here last time, kind of put them on, the, on a level playing field with some of the best programs? I think it does. I, yeah. I think it, it lays the groundwork, but then the really important thing is, is how the players react to it and, and how the, the team culture improves because they are told you're important. Yeah. You're, being a football player at Colorado is important. Winning is important. Um, people care about you. And that, these are ways to show that. But then what they take with that information, what they do with it, is what really matters. And I've seen a, a real improvement in the culture of the program. I hear great things about this year's team. Yeah. I was here a couple of years ago. I thought the, the pieces were in place to have the kind of season they did. Have to do it consistently. But I like what I hear about the, the love and the brotherhood and the chemistry and having each other's back. Th those are things that I see, Mark, at the highest level of the sport. It's what Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, Ohio State, the elite of the elite, they have in common. And CU, I think, is working towards that, needs to get it. Well, it's great to chat here for a few minutes with one of the great alums here at the University of Colorado, Chris Fowler. You know, last Friday night, Buffs opened a Pac-12 conference play with a great win over UCLA. The fan support for that game was outstanding. Today is the opener of the Pac-12. We got Colorado versus UCLA. One giant force ready to crush this UCLA team today. So tonight is Friday Night Lights and we, went, we all wearing black. We have the students that are in black. We have other fans that are in black. We get the team that's in black. And why? Unity, baby! 
Blackout game's always one of the most fun games of the season. Good to get all the Folsom Field fans in there, all wearing black, feeling good, rooting on the Buffs. Go Buffs. Direct snap to him. Chanel up the middle. Touchdown, Colorado. With the fans and us playing black, it just plays a big tribute to our home field at Folsom. And, you know, we just want to bring out the best and just how the, the whole Folsom land is going crazy. Let's go, see you! Great images from that Friday night Pac-12 conference opener. Buffaloes over UCLA, the only, by the way, undefeated team remaining in the Pac-12. We continue with one of the great alums here at CU, Chris Valor. You were watching that game. How, how about the atmosphere? I was in a bar. Uh -huh. I'll just say it. I was in a all bar right. at Penn State. You're old enough, by the get, way. Getting ready for the whiteout <laughs> game. And here's this, this crowd all in black with the energy coming through the screen. I'm sure yeah. it must have been fun to be here. Wish yeah. I could have been. And I think that's important. You know, it, it's important because it helps the team that night. I think they use that energy. But it also is important because it shows the nation what a passionate fan base yeah. Colorado has and how the crowd can make a difference. you got this beautiful setting. I mean, nature has provided that. You've got a great stadium. I think the, the, the students have been there. The regular fans have to get involved. To make it a tough, energized environment, Mark, it's not just the student body. The yes. regular fans need yeah. to learn from that and bring that same kind of passion and energy. That's what it makes it tough for the opponent. If only we can get Chris Fowler to come back and do a Saturday night game. <laughs> I did a Thursday night game. <laughs> Remember the overtime game with West yes. Virginia? Yes. That's the only time that I've been able to call a game here since I left. I was on the sidelines back in 96. Game day was here okay. a couple of times. Got to get game day back here as well. But, man, that would be a dream to do an ABC primetime game from Folsom because it would mean a couple of things. One, I get to do it. And two, the buffs would be – right there That's among right. the elite. Being an upper, upper echelon kind of team. What, what do you think about when you think about your time here at CU as a student? A lot of hard work. <laughs> you know, this has a reputation as being a party school. People know that, not for me. Right. I mean, I, I was, I was, the program struggled, as right. you know, in those yes. years. We're talking about, you know, 83, 84, 85, and wins were few. And I was sitting there on, a, on an IBM Selectric typewriter. <laughs> for you kids, before computers, there were things called typewriters. And I gave up a lot of social life, which is, which is fun around here. I don't, right. I don't know that I advocate giving up as much as I gave up, but I was just trying to work every angle, meet as many media people as I could, get all these experiences, be versatile, and I think it, um, it did end up paying off, but I, I do wish it had more fun here. I, it, because there's not much fun, as you know, when, when they're losing game after game. I mean, one in ten, three in seven, that was, that was what we were dealing with. Chris, you should have been here for that decade uh, where the buffs were that I was calling a gauge. But great to see you. <laughs> Continue success. My pleasure. All right. One of the great alums. He does Saturday Night Football, of course, for ESPN and ABC. That's Chris Fowler. We'll continue. We'll take a time out here at the Stampede. Back in a moment. Back in the Buffalo Stampede, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson, back here at the Champions Center. Daniel Steinberg, the uh, brand new tennis coach. I think we can still say brand new, can't still we? brand new. Yeah, yeah, you've been here, what, three months? Almost three months. Do you still get lost when you walk around the building? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Google map. <laughs> there you go, Google map. You know, we just had Chris Fowler on a moment ago, one of the great alums here, who's a huge tennis fan yeah, yeah. and, and a, a guy that does a lot of tennis. In fact, just did the U.S. Open here a short time ago. Uh, how has it kind of been wading into your first season here for the Buffaloes? Uh, it's been good so far. So I think the team really bought into what we were preaching, the, mm -hmm. the new culture that we want to have on the team. Um, we have three returners and four new girls. So it was, it was a little easier to bring in new culture just because um, there's a lot of new people on the team. And there's a lot of excitement in the team. And with the team you have in terms of the roster, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a sales job you got to do. Hey, I'm here, and you've got to buy into what I'm trying right. to sell you. Right. right? Um, luckily, the girls really bought it. So they were excited yeah. for the change. They want to do better. Uh, and they really uh, they, they were happy to do everything we asked for. So they, they asked for this. This is what they wanted. They wanted to push themselves. They want to do better. So they, they bought in. And luckily, it wasn't a big challenge. I think one of the unique challenges from a tennis standpoint, maybe skiing has got some of this as well. Yeah is it's a worldwide game in terms mm -hmm. of recruiting. So you can bring in players from all over the globe. It's just not within a five-state radius here. Right. There's a unique chemistry issue that right. you have to address. Right. It, it's fun. Yeah. Um, first of all, to understand everyone comes from the same background. So everyone's mm -hmm. been playing tennis their whole life. So we do have a lot in common. It doesn't matter if you're from Australia or, or Colorado mm -hmm. or Europe. Um, so they do have that in common. And they, I mean, they buy into everything really fast and then and they become best friends really quickly. So. Yeah. 
I think, I don't know, it, it's a lot of fun to see all the different cultures mesh into one. They, they jump in and you all got a united goal. That's going to be a good I tennis team here at the yeah. University of Colorado. Hey, by the way, they open up with the Seal Invitational. First event of the fall season just a few days ago. So we kicked off our fall season today basically with our uh, CU Invitational. Um, we have six visiting teams here. This is a great way for us to start the season at home. Great way to get some practice matches, um, a lot of quality matches, um, a lot of tennis, which is exactly what we need at this point of season. We've been training hard, just working on specific individual things. Now we get a chance to compete and see if we can actually do it. I think my hope is for them to understand that we can be very casual and friendly off the court, but then when we're on the court, it means business and, and you know expectations. They know our expectations, and um, when we need to be tough on them, we're tough on them, and when we need to be more supportive and, and casual, then we do that. Here's some highlights from the CU Invitational. First event for Daniel Steinberg and the CU tennis team. Well, what was your thoughts coming out of that first competition? It was good. Um, we got a lot of quality match play, which is mm -hmm. what we needed. We've just been practicing so far, so it was, it was important for us to go out and compete. Um, it was sport, important for us coaches to see the girls compete because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's one thing to practice all the time, but then, you know, we need to see them battle. We need to see them in, in um, challenging situations. Yeah. So it was good for us. Yeah. As you're learning this team, what are you looking for as you're watching your team? Obviously, you want talent, right. but what are you looking right. for beyond that? Um, you know, we don't expect great tennis in September. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, we're not there yet. We were looking to see how we compete and how we battle, so we talk a lot about you know, running for every ball, fighting for every point, playing with your heart. And we, we saw a lot of that. And we saw a lot of third sets, which is a great indication of okay. how the team battles. So we were happy with that, for sure. You're here at CU, is, is you're kind of learning the institution, the program. Is this a good place for you to recruit to? It's, it's a great place to recruit to. Yeah, yeah I mean, we have everything to offer for the athletes, and that's what I was looking for. We have a full, you know, full picture of just great academics, Pac-12 tennis, unbelievable city. So, yeah, definitely can offer everything. Oh, I like it. It's a great place to be yeah. here. Boulder, Colorado, University of Colorado. All right, well, good luck next week. Thank you, sir. All right, tennis coach Daniel Steinberg joining us here for a couple of minutes. Coming up next in a stampede. Believe it or not, basketballs are flying at the CU Event Center. The season's underway with practice. We'll talk with head coach Tad Boyle next. Pulls up two on the shot clock. Fires, misses. McKinley White, offensive rebound. Put it back coming in. Count it. Whistle and a foul. Oh, it's six foot tall. Does he get those rebounds? Well, that was a great play last year. The Pac-12 Conference opener for McKinley Wright in overtime as the Buffs knocked off number four, Arizona State. Back in a stampede, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson, Tad Boyle, head coach for the Colorado Buffaloes. The schedule, and I've got it right here in my hands, red hot off the presses. That's right. Uh, the slate is laid out for you, and you're going to win every single game, yes, right? Yeah, that's that's the that's the plan, right? No no game on there, we can't win. I like but, it. Uh, I, like I think it. it's been 1976 since Indiana that's ran right. the table since that's happened in college basketball so yeah. we'll see well take a look at it for us well what what stands out for you what do you like about it well look we've got great balance in our preseason schedule we've got six games at the CU Events Center uh, six games at home we got six games away from home three in Hawaii neutral court uh, against quality opponents and then uh, we might have a fourth road game against Hawaii if we if we play them in the semifinals we go to New Mexico which mm -hmm. is the pit uh, the original pit, and then at Air Force, at San Diego, who beat us last year. So we've got three true road games, three uh, neutral court games, and then six at home. So uh, one of the biggest challenges for our team last year, Mark, as you remember, it was hard for us to win away from Boulder. Right. And uh, we're going to get a chance to do that six times uh, in the preseason this year. What are the challenges you always fight? Is the strength of schedule, putting together the best resume for the NCAA tournament, not an easy task all the time. How did you guys address Not that? Not always. I mean, you know, uh, look, uh, scheduling is by far the hardest thing that we have to do. Recruiting is hard. Scheduling is harder, mm -hmm. especially when you're in, in, in Boulder. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that's challenging every year, year in, year out. Some years things fall into place. Some, some years are a little bit tougher. This is the toughest year we've had ch uh, challenge to, to scheduling. We've got a good, really good team coming back. And... Uh, Getting teams to start series in Boulder sometimes is difficult. Sometimes we have to go on the road first. We weren't able to do that this year, but we will next year. All right, and uh, death taxes in Colorado starting on the road in the Pac-12. Yes. Who would have thunk it? Well, five out of seven years, the Buffs will be on the road, open up conference play. Colorado just, in fact, unveiled its brand new uniforms, and McKinley Wright and Naaman Wright had a chance to show them off for us. What's up, Buffs Nations? These are the new jerseys that just came out this week. You know, I'm really loving them so far. 
Uh, we got a nice little tight fit. Got some new designs all around. Uh, we got a sign that most people won't be able to see that's in the back that says family. Um, these are really nice. We're looking forward to painting them this year and having a great season. Um, I just like the design, the color. Uh, we got the, you know, this right here, this design right here represents uh, Ralphie's horns. And uh, it's a sign of speed, so you know I'll be using my speed as an advantage this year, uh, similar to Ralphie when she's running out on the football field. It's really important for us to, you know, look good, feel good, play good, and have meaning behind our jerseys. Having a nice looking uniform is important to us because, you know, we like to look good when we play good. You know, you know we say look good, play good. Good looking threads there uh, on the Buffaloes for 2018-19. Absolutely. Do you, you yeah. have a design goes? No or? uniforms. Uh, I just try to stay out of things that uh, create have, have creative talent because sure. I've got zero of it. So I just let, leave that to the experts. <laughs> I, I was joking before the break there, before seeing the new uniforms about starting in the row. That seems to be yes. a consistency with the Buffaloes. But, uh, boy, you've got Arizona coming to town. You've got Oregon coming to town. UCLA coming to town. Uh, always a challenge. Always a challenge. You got you know, you got nine in a, at home, nine on the road. Uh, this is the second year in the uh, last three where we've started five of seven on the road, which is a challenge. We have got to be ready to go uh, come uh, the change of the new year, 2019, to be ready to roll because five of your first seven on the road tests you. The last time we faced that test, we, we started out 0-7, so uh, built ourselves. Oh, we, we, we really played well. Now, the, the, the flip side is on the back end, you get more home games and road games. Yeah. So look, it's you have to look at it in totality, but we have got to be ready to go playing good basketball uh, in early January. First practice, by the way, coming up for the Buffaloes next Tuesday, October 2nd. You're excited about this team. Yeah, it's going to be a fun team. Fun team to watch. I think anybody that followed our team last year really saw our young guys develop and grow before their eyes. We've got one fifth-year senior, Naaman Wright, and then two juniors, Lucas, uh, Seward, Deleon Brown. We're going to need th the uh, leadership and production from those three guys. You know, nine of our 13 players are freshmen or sophomores, so those guys have got to uh, develop quickly, and uh, this is going to be a fun team to come out and watch. Yeah. And I think as our preseason uh, schedule un unveils itself, you know, coming out to watch the Buffaloes is what it's all about. Evan Batty, McKinley Wright, Tyler Bay, Deshaun Schwartz, Dallas Walton. We got some really good players coming coming in. I like it. Well, fall is in the air. Soon basketballs will be in the air. Here in the front range, just head ball the Buffaloes get ready to kick off the 2018-19 campaign. Come on out and see them play at the Sea Event Center. That puts a wrap on the Buffalo Stampede. We'll talk to you next time.